So my name is Ard Louis. I'm professor of theoretical physics at the University of Oxford. And we're here in the Beecroft building, which has just been put up. So physics splits between people that do experiments, so people that make things and look at how they behave, and people that do theories about them. So they try to predict what's going to happen in the experiments or explain what happens in experiments. So if you do an experiment and you say, oh, what happened? You might come to me and I'll say, oh, it might be this, it might be that. And so I do theories about them. The most famous is Albert Einstein, who's probably the most famous of all. There's a very famous Maria Goupert Mayer, who she discovered how the inside of nuclei worked. Uh, there's a very famous man called Richard Feynman, who figured out how quantum mechanics works. With, electric, with electromagnetism, so lots of very famous theoretical physicists. Well, so I grew up in Gabon in Central Africa, which is in the middle of the jungle, and my parents are biologists, so we always had animals around and they all talked about science a lot. I had a ch pet chimpanzee as a child uh, called Bertje, whom I really enjoyed playing with, obviously. He was like a little brother for me, and so I just grew up around you know, trees and forests and animals, and it made me naturally interested in science. And over time, as I went to secondary school, I realized that actually I was most interested in physics, um, mainly because I liked the math. Physics has a lot of math in it, and I like the math. And if you're a theoretical physicist, you use a lot of math. And so I like physics that can combine the math and the science into one. Well, interestingly, over time, I've moved back into biology. So I'm now using ideas from physics to try to understand things about the, li the living world. So those would be examples like evolution. So how did things change over time? Or how do things in your body make themselves? So your body's full of all kinds of beautiful little intricate machines. There are little rotary motors that spin around really, really quickly. There are little walkers that walk along tracks, literally like a little step, 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 but they're tiny, tiny, tiny. And so we'd love to understand how they do it. It's a biological motor, but it has, it looks like a mechanical motor. It has a little thing in the middle that spins around like a rotor. So if you looked at it, you'd think it looks like a real motor, like a motor that you can hold in your hands, except that it's millions of times smaller. It would be a little bit like the size of your house compared to the size of the Earth. That's how big the difference is. Wow. So the difference is really, really big. And these things are they're so small that we don't even know how to make them ourselves. In other words, we know how to make a motor in a factory. So lots of big people or machines put things together. But these things inside your body, they make themselves. So what really happens is the body makes the components, like the little parts of the motor, and they float around in the cell and then they stick together in just the right way to make a motor that works. It's a little bit like taking Lego blocks and putting some glue on them and then shaking it around, and out comes a fully formed train. And so the body can do that. The biology can do that. Animals can do that. Plants can do that. All cells can do that. And we would like to understand how they do it. Well, viruses are the same, are a really good example of these self-making, self-assembling things. So viruses are little caps, little, a little ball, typically, with some DNA, RNA inside. And so if you have a cold, it means you're making lots of copies of itself. But they're really just little balls. But they hijack your cells to make copies of themselves. So they, they get into your cells, and then your cells make copies of them, and then you get sick. But the question, the cell doesn't make balls, the cell makes the little bits that the balls made out of, and maybe like 50 of them or 60 of them, and they float around and they come together, boom, into this really well-defined shape. So I'm trying to understand how that works by making 
computer model. So on my computer, I make a little model of these viruses, and then I have them move around like as if like they're moving around in real life. They move around, and then I see whether they'll make balls. And if I my theory is correct, then if I shake them around, they should form a little ball, just like real viruses do. So I always tell people these are computer viruses, but not the bad kind. They're the ones that I make myself, and they come together. In fact, sometimes doing science of my type, where you do theories and make computer models and watch how they work, it's a little bit like being paid for playing video games, right? You put things together and they all come together. It's a really fun thing to do. Thank <laughs> you.